All right, let's go ahead and stand up. Amen. Hallelujah. Who believes that Jesus has all the power that we need? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. My God can never fail. He's been through time and again. Trust in Him. He's got all the power you need. He's never early. He's never late. It takes courage. It takes faith. Trust in Him. He's got all the The devil steals And my death's been paid in full And every day does miracles My God can never fail He's been through time and again Just in him, he's got all the power he need He's never early, he's never
Praise the Lord. Good to see everybody this morning. Isn't it good to be in the house of God? Yeah. Now, isn't it good to be the house of God? Yeah. Hallelujah. Turn around and tell somebody, I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Then you can be seated. Um, we miss those that aren't with us today. Hallelujah. Uh, Jess and Cap are yeah, right about there right now. Okay, I guess I guess turkey's somewhere in here, isn't it, guys? Isn't this turkey in here somewhere? Right here. Okay, Black Sea here. Okay, and then went up into Amsterdam, which is back there, and back over here. They're coming to Atlanta. They had a um, they had a 12-hour layover in Amsterdam yesterday. Over where? Oh, so they're coming down. They're coming down. Okay. All right. So they're coming down. All right. I forgot. That's what, that's that's normal. That's normal route is to go up because the earth is smaller in circumference up there. And then they come down. It takes um, it's quicker. Hallelujah. So anyway, they're out about an hour out of Atlanta. They'll get home tonight about 1030 because they have an eight-hour layover in Atlanta. Their return their return trip was, was they <laughs> They flew from Cappadocia to Istanbul and um, spent the night just because of where the flights were. Then they, then they left Istanbul yesterday and got to Amsterdam, and they had a 12-hour layover. So they got a hotel, went down into to the city, uh, city central, went to Anne Frank's house, and went around a couple of museums, and then went back and got some sleep. And now when they get to Atlanta, they have an eight-hour layover. That's the... 
itinerary from the region of the unsaved departed. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's not, a, that's not an exciting itinerary. But, you know, they didn't make the most of it. She, like I said, she got the hotel at Amsterdam Airport, took the train into town and got to see some stuff there. And, uh, but <clears throat> they're going to get to share the things that happened in, in the conference and in the uh, meeting. Exciting. Um, L uh, Olivia ended up with them um, for, for some of the days. And um, they, they did go hot air ballooning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Which is what Cappadocia is known for. Uh, down that part of, the, of that, that's what they do. They hot air balloon. So Jesse's logo that she created, they used for the entire conference. They, uh, she created the logo. for So all the banners had her logo she created on it. So she was real excited. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. So <clears throat> uh, Wednesday night, youth church returns. But we are going to give them about five minutes to give a here's what happy, exciting type condensed version and then in september um the plan is i am going to be ministering in newburn on sunday the 18th so we're going to turn the service over to them to share okay so you'll get to hear the whole report then all right but things happen i mean god moved and got, they got to minister more than they thought they were going to uh, when they got there, they, they were scheduled for one service to actually minister, and they got to do more of, more than that, and uh, make some real connections. Um, like I, um, I told them, you'll never be the same. Uh, those people will remember you forever. Um, they do. They just, they never forget you when you go and minister over over in another country. They just they never forget you. I've had them send me gifts. To America from Estonia from back when I went back in 92. Um, when they found out Ken was coming to America, they sent me gifts because <laughs> they, they still remember. You know, so they, they, they'll never forget you because you brought, you brought the life and the love to them in Jesus' name. Praise God. So uh, we're excited to see them get back. I'm so excited to give up the dog. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, uh, we're going to be back dogless again tomorrow. I have my way about it, it would be tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, once you get used to not having the dogs in the house, it's like, whew. But then all the grand puppies keep showing up for visits. <laughs> like, okay. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm, I'm for, the, yeah, for a little while, yeah. But when I got to get up, go let them out and go feed them and go bring them back in and make them lay down and. Hallelujah. All righty. Praise the Lord. So a um, couple of things. Um, we, we need some volunteers. We need some of your skill sets. Okay. As you notice this morning, there's no um, words or music going. Um, Dr. Bill is out in Missouri visiting Ben. Him and Belinda took off and went to visit Ben. Uh, Cap, who normally would take over, is coming over Boston. He's not here. Um, Jessica runs the camera stuff usually, but if she's not here, we need more, more than we need multiple people uh, to be able to do these different jobs. Okay. So that we just, we keep right on going. Um, we, we need, if you have computer skills and are, are proficient at, you know, learning, um, software, we would like, you know, and I, I say proficient, you don't have to be an expert, but just so you can learn it, you know, if, if you, we don't need you putting up the words to Amazing Grace when we're singing, um, you know, I walk by faith. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so, and there's other things we need. To be, we, need we need people who are um, willing to come clean the church, you know. Uh, there's th a lot of things that we didn't have going on over the six years we were in the community center. I mean, kind of what that happened is was everybody just kind of, Showed up and helped set up chairs and break down chairs and leave. And we appreciate it, but we're no longer there. And with the other building, they would come in and help us set up some of the musical equipment on the platform. When we were borrowing the other church, that's no longer applicable. Having our own place and running our own stuff is all applicable now, okay? So we would really love to have you volunteer instead of me voluntolding. We don't like, I, I remember I was in a conference with uh, T.L. Osborne and Daisy Osborne. 
And well, actually, Dr. Summerall was holding it up there at uh, the church in South Bend. And, um, and after one of the sessions, it, uh, the Osbournes were there ministering. And it was just, I love T.L. Osborne. I mean, I, you know, what a, what a gift to the body of Christ. Um, but somebody's just asking Dr. Summerall, you know, well, now we, we're having trouble getting people working in our nursery. He said, uh, uh, how do we get people to work in our nursery? He said, simple. This week you're in the nursery. Next week you're in the nursery. The week after that you're in the nursery. That's how I take care of it. And they probably went, sir, yes, sir, sir. <laughs> you didn't mess with Dr. Summerall. <laughs> you didn't tell him no. Hallelujah. Janice, I wasn't telling you you were in the nursery today. Okay, let's just, just, just let you know. Get it back there. <laughs> no, no. I'm teasing. I am teasing. Um, but we, we, we got things that we just need now to buy into as not just coming to church, but getting involved and doing stuff, okay? And um, so some of these things, these are glaring things when we don't have somebody here to run the, 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 the words. You're used to seeing it, used to having it. And then when it's not there, boom. Just like, um, you know, we're, we're recording. All of a sudden we can't record because maybe nobody knows how to do it and they're not, there's nobody here to do it. Um, we just can't stick, you know, anybody up there because they've got to be able to know how to operate the software. Okay, um, those are the kind of things we're talking about. And uh, so we, we do need for you to let us know what skill sets you have. Okay, because I don't want to come ask you, can you, will you be willing to do this? And you're going, well, Pastor, I, I, I'll, I'll try, but, you know, uh, I don't even know how to turn a computer on. Or I'm scared of them or, you know, or scared about you, you, don't, you don't like learning software. How many, how many don't like learning software? Danny doesn't like learning stuff. See, there's honesty. <laughs> right straight up front. Um, you know, other things we're going, we need to do is get greeters. People who will greet people as they come in in the mornings. And so now that we're kind of settling in, we really need to step up some areas and, and, and get after her. Amen? All right. So you got the text. Let us know what you can do, what you would like to do. And you don't have to reply all. You can reply on things or, you know, without having to send it to everybody. Um, but send us, you know, uh, you can send to Pastor Ed Taylor at AOL.com. We still haven't gotten figured out how to, you know, Bill says he needs my phone. I haven't been able to get with Bill to sit down with my phone with him and figure out how to get the Expedition Church mail to work on my phone. It won't work. And I can't, you know, well, it should work, well, it's not. And so, <clears throat> and we're going to migrate from FBC mail. So the safe mail right now, <clears throat> if you want to get me for sure, is Pastor Ed Taylor at AOL.com. Okay? Simple. Guarantee you'll get that. <clears throat> that works on all, all kinds of places. And so anyway, there you go. Uh, let's see if there's any more announcements. Don't, so youth returns Wednesday after a brief um, Jess and Cap. Like, and I'm going to have to put a clock on her because I know she'll want to go on, but we're not. We're going to put the clamps down because we want to save it for a morning service. All right. Hallelujah. Um, also, we've did, you got the email or the text. You should have gotten that. We've, we've um, put prayer on hiatus until the second Tuesday, 13th, is it, of September. We're going back to Zoom. Um, just a lot going on right now with school starting back. All, you know, Jesse being out of the country, just so many things. And I'm trying to wrap up a few things before we get full, full blown in the school year. Um, so, hallelujah. And I don't think we need somebody to help us spray the parking lot. It's turning into a grass turf field. We, been, we can't get out here when it's not raining. Every time we try, we have a time that we can do it, it's raining. And um, haven't been able to get out here and do it. And now it's just. It's taken over and gone crazy. Joe did bring his big sprayer. I haven't bought the chemical. Because <laughs> every time I look, I'm going, I'm going to run to the church and get the chemical. No, it's raining. So there's just a lot to be taken care of. And we got our anniversary service coming up next month. The 25th of, um, of um, September is our homecoming church dedication. So a big, a big deal. Okay, real big deal. And uh, we're excited about that. Dean Tag Gregorich. Gregorich from Rainbow Bible Training College will be with us as our uh, speaker and uh, dedicator. I don't know what to call it. He's our dedicator. 
Uh, he's doing the dedication service, and we're excited about that. And then Sid Will's Catering will be catering our uh, lunch dinner on the grounds following it. I think Ellie's making macaroni and cheese. So we're going to have cabbage, mashed potatoes and gravy, um, roasted chicken, um, some kind of beef. I forgot. Oh, meatloaf. I think it was meatloaf. And, um, and their meatloaf is good. Um, hallelujah. And, and rolls. And, of course, we're going to y'all going to bring tea and desserts and stuff. We're going to have dinner out here on the grounds. Glory to God. Amen. So it's a, uh, it's coming up. And then end of September, 1st of November, will be our Down East 5th Sunday um, Eastern Carolina barbecue and fried chicken. Hallelujah. So that's all. Get that all. Get ready on your calendar. Penny, don't you be gone then either. You tell your family I can't be there last of. All right. You see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Tell them they'll just have to come here. Bring the babies here. Now you told one of them already. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm teasing on you, Trinity, but we want you here for dedication. Hallelujah. You need to be here for that. And they can come. Yeah. Hallelujah. All righty. It's time to give. If you need an offering envelope and you're giving with cash or check, they're on the seat backs in front of you. Um, if you are giving electronically, go ahead and do that. We have not switched yet. That is still, you know, with Jessica Cat being gone, that kind of took care of some of my uh, stuff that I needed to take care of with them gone because she's she kind of set all that up initially, and so she has all the whatevers to change it, and so we're waiting until we can set a hardcore date, make the changes, and then let you know so you stop using the old hashtags to to give with, okay? So we will let you know uh, in advance that on such and such date, we're going with the new name hashtags. Okay? We all cool? All right. All those, because we got a lot of people who give electronically. Okay. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they tithe and give. Thank you that heaven's windows are opened unto them, and you empty out on them blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. All right. Go ahead, Brother Joe. Receive the in-house. You go ahead and send your electronic. Glory to God. As soon as it happens, uh, we'll let the um, young people go. Marching right on out. There goes Tim, Shay, Bree, and Raleigh, and Emma Lee. Hallelujah. A.K.A. Ellie's clone. Lord have mercy. You ever looked over while they're worshiping? <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's like, okay. Open your Bibles, if you will, to the second chapter of the book of Acts. And we'll read our foundation text as we conclude today along this lines. Uh, Acts 42, Acts 242 through 45. They continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Fear came upon every soul. And many signs and wonders were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, had all things in common, sold their possessions and goods, parted them to all men as every man had need. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Can y'all say amen? Well, we've talked, you know, we talked about evangelizing. We talked about unifying of the saints, talked about fellowship, um, talking about breaking of bread. We did talk about um, prayer. You know, we talked about um, how the, how prayer, last week we spent a lot of time on that, how, how prayer was so instrumental into where we are now as a church. Hallelujah. And um, we talk about today, you remember it says they did many, many signs and wonders. Amen? You know, when the church is in this common thread and common goal and common purpose around the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, with our ultimate goal, what's the ultimate goal of everything we're doing? Evangelize. Win people to Jesus. Amen? That's more important. That is more important than your Mercedes. 
I'm just going to be blunt with you. Well, I'm a word of faith or I believe in being blessed. Well, that's fine. But if your blessings cause you to negate or abdicate your responsibility to win the loss, what good are your blessings? What good is it for you to ride around in your prosperity mobile, living in your prosperity house, wearing your prosperity suit, living on your prosperously sumptuous dining while people die and go to hell? Thank you for your enthusiasm. Are you here? God loves humanity. And so our ultimate goal, remember Jesus gave us a commission. He did not say go into all the world and get rich. Now, I'm not against prosperity. Don't take me wrong. But when it takes on the wrong mindset and takes on the wrong uh, governance in our life, then it has come, become counterproductive. Jesus even said, what a good does it do a man uh, to gain the whole world and lose, lose his own soul? So he, he, he was not, he was, you know, he was a balanced prosperity preacher. And Dad Hagen was too. Some people call him the father of the prosperity movement. Go back and read his stuff and listen to his stuff. He is nothing like these, these uh, people make out. He did write the book, The Midas Touch, you know, to correct abuse, okay, and excess. Okay, remember King Midas, everything touched turned to gold? Okay, kind of hard to eat when it all turns to gold. All right. And so evangelism becomes our number one goal. Now, things that, that facilitate our strength in evangelism was the koinonia, the fellowship, participating in the things of Christ, not just covered dish dinners, which we love. Amen. They're, they're on the bottom end of the koinonia, not at the top. Okay. Um, um, so, you know, being around the, being sound doctrinally, that, that does help. We talked about that. Prayers, participation in daily prayers, breaking of bread, being in constant remembrance of our blood covenant last week. We talked about the blood of Jesus. Amen. I think it was a week before we got into prayer. Uh, kind of got a little bit out of war, but that's all right. It don't matter. But last week we got talking about the blood of Jesus and how the communion table and being reminded of the blood. But today, the, the powers of the coming world, which were mightily active in the church, in healing the sick, raising the dead, and having victory over demonic powers. Now, we live in a fallen world. <clears throat> this is not a glorified world. Dear Lord, are you here? There is an agenda from the realm of darkness to destroy I mean, when you look at the stuff going on in the world today, I mean, you, you can't, if you shake your head, you'll get whiplash because it's bad. I mean, you got school systems bringing in uh, drag queen to have drag queen reading hour in elementary schools. Who wants some dorky looking male dressed up like a woman with his hairy chest showing out in there with a wig on reading to the little kids with them all rubbing up against them and sitting in there laughing and all this stuff called pervert hello but they're adopting it everywhere this world is fallen and and listen the the agenda to capture the minds of children is very clear. Hitler said, give me five years with a child and they'll be a Nazi forever. What? Through indoctrination. Okay? So there is perversion. The world is in darkness. We are not of, though we're in this world, we are not of this world. We are ambassadors for Christ. We operate here under spiritual diplomatic immunity. Satan has no authority over us. But if we're going to set the captives free, we got to walk in the power of the world to come. Amen. Amen. We got to be healing the sick. We got to be casting out devils, raising the dead, delivering people from Satan's authority. Can you say amen? amen? And we are anointed to do that. It is not just enough 
Well, I'm saved. Let's go to church and have our charismatic worship, do the Tulsa two-step, have a Holy Ghost service, and run home and talk about how great it was, and then lead the lost to go to hell. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Or to come to a service, have the guest speaker in. They lay hands on all the sick Christians. And all the sick Christians are getting healed. Whoa, we're getting healed. But we're not going out getting the world healed. The power of God is not just for, in, is actually primarily not for inside the building. It's for out there. You ought to be laying hands on the sick folk out there. Are you here? You ought to be casting devils out of folk out there. Bringing deliverance. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me, Jesus said. To preach the gospel to the poor. Recovery of sight to the blind. To bind up the brokenhearted. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. What is the acceptable year of the Lord? Well, the year of Jubilee. But we're not talking about the Jubilee of the Old Testament. We're talking about the Jubilee of, of the church. Where restoration takes place in people's lives. Amen. They get back what the devil's stolen from them. They get their spiritual life back. They get their health back. They get, things, they get the goodness of God manifest in their life full, in fullness. Amen. There is a world. Listen, people all over the world are hungry. I'm not going to share what happened. But stuff happened in this meeting that they were just in. When you had people there from all over, they had, um, um, I can't, I'm, name, I'm not going to name the country, but they had people from very strong uh, Muslim countries show up. Got, well, they went to another Muslim country, didn't think anything about it. But they ended up in this Holy Ghost conference. Hallelujah. Praise God. They came pastors in these countries who do live under persecution coming. They're hungry around the world. Yeah. Are you here? But we're being distracted. And let me say this. If Satan can't keep you out of something, he'll push you too far into it. Now, he couldn't keep the church out of, the, out of prosperity and uh, the word of faith and confession and believing God and so forth. So what did he do? He tried to push two people too far to where it was all about them, their needs, their blessings, their this, their that. People traveling from this conference to that conference to get more word, to get more blessed, to get this, to get that, <clears throat> and never giving out. There's a reason the Dead Sea is a principle. All those rivers flow into it, and nothing flows out of it, and it's too rich to, to sustain anything. Oh, you, it's, it's, it's a wealth of minerals. You just don't, it's no good to anything else. Okay? It needs an outlet. That, that, all, that, all that bringing in needs an outlet. And when you're always bringing in and never having an outlet, you become a dead sea. You become a repository that never gives out. Hello? You become my damn blue belly. You ever see, y'all got, got to see Veggie Tales and see my damn blue belly. Okay? She was always gathering up, always gathering up. You know, and and uh, the peas tried to straighten her out, but I don't know if it worked or not. <laughs> Is he peas? Hey. Let me see Flynn's pea. Hey. They had the little, little, um, whatever you call them. Beret. beret on. You had the little berets on. We as a finish, please, please. All right. So, Mark 16. It is so easy it is so easy to be caught up in what's in it for me. that we can forget, why am I here? Amen. Amen. Why I am here, number one, is not so I can get what's in it for me. Now, yes, yes, and I'm not, unte I'm not unteaching 
what we've taught that God wants to bless you. God wants to prosper you. God wants you wealthy. God wants you healthy. God wants you to. I'm not unteaching that. I'm saying we got to bring it in the right perspective and understand that that fits into a bigger picture. Amen. Remember, he gives us the power to get wealth that we may establish this covenant in the earth. Now, we took the other side of that meaning that he wants to establish a covenant of prosperity with us. And we preach that, make you rich, make you rich. Make... Let's go to the other side of that. He gives us the power to get wealth that we may go to the nations and take the gospel and establish his covenant with mankind of redemption in the earth. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Which I believe is a higher meaning. Yeah. Now, you do have to have finances to give ab abundantly to, to do some of the things that need to be done. It takes money. Amen. Now, I'm going to be honest with Jess and Cap over there. I got jealous because I wanted to be. Okay. You know, I haven't traveled in a number of years now. Um, you know, it just a lot of things happened. Financial church, when the people left, there was no money. We were going in debt. I couldn't go spend five thousand dollars on a mission trip, and the church is in debt. It was, you know, there was no money to do it with, and just add more debt to it. Well, you got to obey God. I can't obey God and put him in debt. He don't tell you know I'm not supposed to be putting in debt out there either. So we're, you know, um, but I'm, you know, I, I, I got the itch. You know, you ever seen a dog try to get that itch and can't get it no matter what they're doing? I got it. I guess the only thing that's gonna satisfy it is to get there. Amen. Hallelujah. So, you know, I'm, I got the itch. They, they put the itch back on me, too. <laughs> I mean, it's like, oh, 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 I'd love to be there. Hallelujah. And they ran into a bunch of people who knew me from Demona days. The, the people who were doing stuff over in that part of the world that remember me from going to the Demona schools back in the 90s. So, you know, uh, I want to go. Okay. Man, I go, mm. Yeah. Well, it's, it takes money to do that. It takes a church, for fi it takes financial under, underpinning to do these things. Amen. And so we understand that. To reach your community, it takes finances. It does. To, you know, to, to, to send out flyers or to do things and, and to do the things to advertise and to get out and to, to let people know you're there and to reach and, and to do those. It takes money to do that. I, I so get that. Trust me, I get it. I mean, this, this year when we moved into the building, we haven't been running around all the time going, we don't have money, we don't have money, we don't have money. We're just trying to be frugal with the money, okay, and, you know, be wise with the money and not just like, oh, because we got money, let's blow it all. Well, no, we, we don't want to do that, okay? I mean, we're, we're, we're getting this priced out to rebuild the thing on the front. Hallelujah. My, my one estimate for the building out back, I can't do. I mean, it's just, it was just, it's out beyond um, and it's because of the lumber. Lumber's so high right now, it's just out beyond reason. So we're, having, we're actually looking at metal buildings now. How much, how much is metal in comparison to wood? And um, it seems to be significantly cheaper right now, like maybe half. So you're like, okay, well, I may have to go with metal. I'd rather have wood, but at double the price, you know, 22000 to 11000 that's a big difference. And I'll pay for the front. The difference to pay for the front and have left over. So, you know, we got to be frugal. We're being frugal. We're not just blowing money. Okay. But it takes, it takes finances. Okay. However, when we get to the point that finances is all we can think about us. See, we got to be givers. We got to be willing to, to, to give and to give to the kingdom. Amen. If you'll give to the kingdom, God will take care of you. I can, I'll guarantee God will take care of you. That's the principle. Amen. Amen. Now, just don't even go in the service where your guy's got a thousandfold anointing. <laughs> now, there's a thousandfold anointing on me tonight. Come up here and give, and you're you're going to see a thousand return, thousandfold return. I'm sorry. Are y'all here? Or are you gone home? Yes, Brother Hagen didn't adhere to that. Actually, actually, he actually says that you know the. Uh, you know, the 10, the, the, some 30, some 40, some even, I mean, some 60, some even 100 fold is talking about the word. I mean, you study, it is, you know, 
Some has got some, some 30, some 60, some even 100 fold, which is 10,000%, by the way. Amen. Um, he, he, always, he always thought it was the word. That was, that was a return on the word. Some people received back in the word what, uh, what they were putting into it. All right? Now, but it's still got prosperity works. Tithing works. I don't care what somebody just said. God said negated everything they ever taught on tithing. Send them a letter and ask for your money back for all the tape series you bought from them on that subject. <laughs> Since they said throw them all away, I, no, I just want to return. I want my money back. Hello. You know, people are teaching against tithing. I, you know, and, and they'll say that, you know, Malachi, that where it talks about Malachi um, in, the new, in the book of Hebrews isn't referring to, yeah, well, that doggone, yes, it is. When you study that out, you can't just negate the fact he used that example for a reason. Okay? Well, it was talking about, you know, the priesthood. But he receives the tithe. Okay? So I, I disagree with that narrative. Tithing is, was before the law. It was during the law. It was after the law. Giving is something that God's always had. Giving free will offerings. So it takes money. Now, I said all that because we are to be external motivated, reaching others, not internalizing everything we do. Not internalizing everything we do into what's in it for me. We got a world to reach. And if you're constantly ex internalizing all the things, and not ex when I say externalizing, I mean moving beyond what's in it for me to how can I minister this to others and reach others. Amen. Okay? Well, then we become motivated to be useful in the kingdom to minister to them, which is the powers of the world to come. When we look at Acts chapter 1, go over to Acts chapter 1. Now, now they asked Jesus, will you at this time restore your kingdom of Israel? And he said, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father has put into his own power. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. Aren't you glad we can get power after the Holy Ghost? <clears throat> <coughs> and this is, <coughs> this particular power is exosia. Or God has put into his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost. And I didn't look that up. I, I meant to look that up and make sure, see if that was dunamis or um, exorcia on the second word power there. But I can find that real quick. Okay, let's see here. Acts 1, 7, power. Dunamis. Okay, so two different words power here. You shall, um, which the Father has put into his own authority. But you shall receive dunamis, okay? After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, let's stop. What is the ongoing theme, narrative of Jesus with his disciples right before he takes off? Go. Go win, go win them. Go minister. Carry the gospel. Reach people. Amen. Isn't that right? That's his own. He, he tells them in, you know, in, in, in um, Mark and in Matthew. Then he comes over here in Acts right, right here. He's about to take off. Scotty's not beaming him up. He's got a Holy Ghost chariot on his way up. Isn't that right? But you shall receive dunamis, miracle power. After that, the Holy Ghost, or when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses. Again, what's, what happens here? What is the theme we're hitting into here? Witnesses, evangelism. What's the power for? Come on. Louder. To be a witness to Verb, to do what? Evangelize. The miracle power is to evangelize. Not so we can run around and talk about, whoo, I got the power. Mm, come follow me. 
So-and-so got healed. Let's take up an offering. That's called prostituting the anointing. That was pretty blunt, wasn't it? And that's exactly what it is. Somebody gets healed. It's a good time to stop that. Why? People are emotionally excited. They just saw something supernatural take place. So now let's take up the offering. Because they're all stirred up about that. And they'll give big. I said, they'll give big. You can't, you can't do that. You can't sell the anointing. You can't prostitute it. And you will stop the anointing. If you don't think you'll grieve the Holy Ghost doing stuff like that, you are, you're dumber than a brick. And that's pretty dumb. Hello? God doesn't work signs and wonders and miracles so you can get a big offering. Signs, wonders, and miracles are wrought to minister the life of God to hurting humanity. Well, i got to have money to sustain my ministry. There's other ways of believing God to get your ministry doing than having a miracle and then trying to use that to move on the emotions of people. Why? Because when you move on the emotions of people, you haven't helped them. You've hurt them. Because they've given from the soul and not from the spirit. They've given out of, out of carnality and not out of faith. Hello? No. It's all right to take up an offering in a service. Just don't strategically wait till somebody gets a miracle to do it. I mean, it's okay to get up and say, you know, we have a need. I'm not trying to play anybody. This is the need of the church. You give according to what's in your heart. Well, the Bible says every man according as he purposeth in his own heart. So let him give. Not begrudgingly or of necessity. But as every man purposes in his own heart. Amen. We, you know, this is why I am so far all over the place. This is a sawed-off shotgun, double barrel, by the way. Scatter sermon. Have those every once in a while. Now, we refused for years to connect with these capital campaign organizations. Why? Because I wasn't going to have a team, you know, we're going to get a team, and they're going to come in and say, now, who do you want on your team? Well, we'll put Janice and Jerry and Dick and Ellie, and um, we'll put Montria, and um, uh, who else can we put on there? Well, we'll put, um, we'll put Sean on there, Chris. They will show up at your house. They will make a meeting. They will sit you down. They will go to Rita's house. Say, now, Rita. How much can you sacrificially give on a regular basis for X number of years? Because we want to, you know, we're going to build this sanctuary. And, you know, now what they tell you is they, they require a half million dollar minimum building project. Why? Because they get the first 10%. So what? Their fee is $50,000 minimum. Minimum. If you need a six hundred thousand, it's sixty. If you need a million, it's a hundred thousand. Yeah. That's so they set their minimal minimum fee. Uh, what do you call it? A um, consultation fee at fifty grand, and they get it off the top, up front. Now whether you get another penny after the fifty thousand, they don't care. They got their fifty. And they'll fly their team in and teach your team how to go milk the people. Put the screws on them. Oh, yeah. We built our building. Yeah. Can you imagine a, a $3 million project? They walked out with $300,000. Well, it's a ministry. I'm sorry. Well, other ministries get $300,000 for six-week work. We refused. Well, that hurt us. Well, I can't help it. I refused. I am not going to have people going in the church and showing up people's houses and putting the screws on them to give. I mean, put the pressure on them. 
How much can you give? We got to get this project done. We need this building. <clears throat> well, there's other ways of doing it without the, without the um, Chinese torture session. Okay. There are, there are another way. There are other ways of doing it. Like trusting God. Now, the other thing we wouldn't do is up until recently, we have one bank we know of that does this. You could not borrow money as a church without having X number of families in your church sign to take on a certain part of the loan. Cosign. Now, how do I come to you and say, can you cosign for $10,000 of the church loan? Can you co-sign for 20? Can you co-sign for five? Hello? And then, and then what happens when you can't give? Or you, you can't, you, you need to do, do something different and you can't because you're bound to the church's co-signing. So we refuse to do that. We refuse to go the world's way of doing it. Now, if you've done it, go ahead on. We wouldn't. We got in here supernaturally. God started moving and God started doing things and God started bringing money in and God started talking to people and they started doing an obedience to God. And we didn't have to put the screws on anybody. As a matter of fact, one of the gifts I told you, you go back and pray about it for a week. I ain't taken until I know you know you heard from heaven. Amen. Why? Because I don't want somebody doing something and then coming back going, I sure regret doing that. Pastor, you should have you should have known that wasn't right. But most pastors are like, yeah, glory to God, write that check right now. I'm ready for it. I gotta sleep at night. Hello? I said, I have to sleep at night. And some don't some don't mind robbing folk and sleeping. I do. How come you get off on that? Well, oh, I say there's other ways of doing stuff instead of using miracles. God, God doesn't bring miracles to get big offerings. Now, he's put us in our building. We got our building. We're going to grow this building. We're going to pay this off. Hallelujah. Supernaturally, it's going to get paid off in a short period of time. And we're going to build a new building. So we can do more for the kingdom. But it's going, to be in the, it's going to be in a God manner. It's not going to be any pressure. Nobody's going to be under the gun. God's going to speak to people. There might be people just send us money from outside the world. Well, praise God. But it won't be because of pressure. And it won't be because I'm going to promise them they get a, a 10,000-fold return for giving to it. Now, Jesus did say, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. You'll walk, in, you'll walk in supernatural abundant blessings. How come I'm on giving and not on the other part? Well, because it takes giving with the right attitudes. See, we're really, we're really talking about that right now here. This is character stuff. <clears throat> this is really character stuff. The why of what you do. Not the you're supposed to do. It's the why. What's the motivation in your heart when you're doing things you're told the Word of God says to do? Now, it's because we've told you you're going to get a 30, 60, 100-fold return on your giving. So let's give a big offer because it's a special anointing tonight for the 1,000-fold return. Y'all like look at me like a dog at a, at a new pan. Hello. Brother Copeland used to say, dog, a cow at a new gate. And Brother Hagin used to say, like a bullfrog in a West Texas hailstorm. <laughs> Hallelujah. The why? Because if we're going to walk in the powers of the world to come, remember the Bible said about Jesus when you study his ministry? And being moved with compassion. And being moved with compassion, being moved with compassion. See, the hurt of humanity moved him to do what he did. Not how big an offering he was going to get if he did that. You're here, you're going home. Their need 
for freedom and deliverance and healing and, and being set free. Move, he, sympathio in the Greek. Sympathio. It, it literally conveys the idea of feeling the same, being joined together with that. And he saw their hurt, and his heart was knit together with that. And he moved to do something for them because he felt the angst. He felt the, the, the sorrow, the pain that what they were going through was causing. The sympathio also translates sympathy. He was moved with that and he ministered life to them. Out of that, that brought the powers of the world to come. That brought miracles. That brought signs. That brought wonders. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you can cut off signs, wonders, and miracles in a heartbeat by manipulating the anointing to a personal gain and advantage. The Holy Spirit is easily grieved. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. He's easily grieved. That's why he's referred to as like a dove. <sighs> you can have doves out there eating on the ground. You can be throwing all kinds of seed out there and stand up and boom, they're gone. They're startled they're easily. The Holy Spirit's easily grieved. And to take what God intended to minister life and turn it into a channel for personal gain will grieve him. Amen. Now see, you say stuff like this and then people go off the other end. Are you telling us not to, you know, not to have, no, that's not what I'm saying. See, this is heart. This is motive. One of the biggest, one of the most important things you can do as a believer is to keep a check on your motives whenever you're doing something. Are you coming down to the church and helping the church because you want to get the pastor's attention so he'll notice you? Are you coming to do it because you love God and you want, you want to make this place a place where um, people can come and people can be ministered to and you want to be the best it can be because you want to honor God? Hello? Or so that your name will get in the bulletin next week, a, a note of thanks from the pastor. <laughs> Many thanks to sister so-and-so for doing such and such this past week. So your motive's wrong. I said your motive is wrong. You should be able to be the person, I forgot his name, I read about last night, that, that prayed Finney's revivals in. People didn't know, didn't know who he was. Finney was giving all the credit. This guy was going out of four, five, six weeks in advance praying the revival in. When Finney showed up, the revival was ready. The atmosphere was already set up. He prayed. Where, where was that guy? He's in the next city he was going to. He's doing the same thing over there. Getting it ready. Amen. But who got all the credit for all the revival work? Finney. I guarantee you that ain't what happened when they got to heaven. Mr. The guy who was doing all the praying was getting a lot of credit. Y'all here, you've gone home. Okay? So this, let's keep that in mind, that we are, we are in a constant, we're in a constant um, need to evaluate our hearts, make sure what we do is right with, before God, and we have the right reason for doing it. That's big. Why? Because when you do it with the right heart and the right motive, like I said, the, the compassion, the sympathy, the sympathio, of Jesus, like he did, then miracles, signs, and wonders are released. Look, look at Luke again. Luke 4. Eighteen. Well, um, we'll back up. Fourteen. And in the, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. This is after the temptation. Notice, if you read this whole passage, he went into the wilderness full of the Spirit. He came out in the power. Okay? <clears throat> and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in the synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. 
And as his custom was, and this, in other words, this is his ministry text. Okay? He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah in the Greek, Isaiah. And when he, he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit, let's see, he, this is his text he preaches from. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he's anointed me to do what? Preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad he came to set at liberty those that are bruised or oppressed, the margin says. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Closed the book, gave it to the minister, sat down. The eyes of all them in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he said... This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Boy, that one ever get big. It's little Jesus. We saw little Jesus grow up. Actually, they were saying, we saw little Joshua grow up right here in this town. He used to make chairs from, with his daddy over there in the shop. And now he's saying he's the Messiah. That did not go over real big. Okay. But look, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Look at what he's anointed to do. And I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to leave this with you. Um, I want to, I'm going to drive this into you. If prosperity has become your means to live the lifestyle of the rich and famous and not to reach the lost, you don't have prosperity. You got money. John, John wrote to his friend in 3 John 2, Beloved, now King James uses the word wish, but in the Greek it's pray. I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health. Now stop. Well, that's awesome. He is praying that we prosper, that we be in health. Woo! He didn't stop there. We do. The health and wealth gospel. We want people well, and and I'm not, I'm not I'm not I'm not saying that's wrong. Understand? But I'm going back to motive. Notice the next statement. Even as our soul prospereth, in relation to what, how your view, your motive, your heart about things is the governance, is the parameters by which. Prosperity and, and being in health should be in within. Amen? Amen? Your soul prosperity, your attitude, the heart of why you do what you do. Amen. Amen. That is what's governing these things. And that's what should be governing them. Amen. Not running off to the seminar and finding out that, you know, you're sitting there in the meeting and Lord... They're talking about, you know, supernatural debt cancellation. All you're thinking about free and 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 a, 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 a restored clipper through the Caribbean for the next thirty years, because you're rich and not reaching anybody. Oh, you'll give a little bit here and there to the church. Hello. And then for teaching tithing and giving, and, you know, you're going to have, you know, this big return. People are doing tithing and giving because they're going to get this big return. Now, understand, understand. Listen, there's, there's things we say that are true, but I'm just, I'm talking about the heart of the things right now. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to undo everything you've ever heard. I'm trying to put everything you've ever heard and put it under the parameter of your heart in the matter. Because we've taught a lot of good things on prosperity. We've taught a lot of good things on giving. We've taught a lot of good things on uh, seed time and harvest. All true. But if you take the heart out of it, that's the right heart, then, you, then you've got a MLM get rich quick scheme. Come on, Jerry. I know you wanted to grunt. <laughs> he, wanted to, he wanted to let something out. We had a number of years ago, they, they, we had a, there was a thing going around. There was this, this telephone company card. 
And it went through our circles like wildfire. This is how God's going to prosper your ministry. And that, was a, that was the gig they were using. Why? Because if they get Pastor Ed, they get you. Or a good portion of you. Because you trust your pastor. And I'm going to be going, Janice, man, listen, this is, this is non-church. I'm going to give you all the lines. But I'm telling you, God wants to use this to bring prosperity to your life. And, you know, praise God, pastor. So Janice is now giving $100 a month into the thing and buying it, trying to get people into her. Yeah. I got, I got one of them one day. I said, now tell me something. He said, this, you're, you're using the scripture. God's laid the wealth of the sinner up for the just, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is how God's going to transfer the wealth. That's exactly what they were saying. I said, now, what's the break point in your pyramid? What's the break point? The top 11% make money. Okay. So 89 of the people in my downline of the 100 had to be sinners. The top 11 of the Christians. The other 89 had to be sinners. And if one gets saved, we got to move him up and bring somebody else in that's lost. Because you said the wealth of the sinners laid up for the just. So you're taking sinners' money. See, because if I'm losing money, and if I'm in the 89 and I'm losing money, then I'm, I'm categorized with the sinner. There was no answer. But like a motorbike. <laughs> Stop, you know, we, we did that mess. We, we did it with, with the biggest one on the planet. Everybody's going to churches all the time trying to get the pastors, the big churches. Why? Well, they got the pastor. They got the congregation. They got the congregation. They got more folk in the downline. And, and, by, and, and anyway, you'll buy $100 worth of materials of, of st this stuff anyway on your own stuff. I knew people had so much um, um, mm, first letter of the alphabet way. In their houses because they were buying their own stuff so they could get rich. I guarantee if you went to the double diamond, he didn't have a closet full of all that stuff except for showing you how to use it. But we started manipulating people with money. I, I, I don't know why I'm governing this. So we became gullible for every little trick on the, on the thing. So then we, we went from you know, selling MLMs in the church to selling the anointing. Because I got a thousand volt anointing tonight. Come up and give them the offering. Then we start coming up with things like you got to give to the higher anointing. So come stuff the money in the preacher's pockets while he's preaching. Because labor is worthy of his hire. He is worthy of his hire. But he's not worthy of a, of a multi-million dollar contract this year because he preached, preached every Sunday. Why? When there are people going to hell. Now, unless you're going to be taking that money and using it for the kingdom. I've, I've heard, um, do y'all mind if I'm over here since I'm over here? We're going to wrap this up. Dan Hagen taught something one time, and people get latched onto it, and they started, they started going around, I believe in God for a one-time gift of you know, $500. Not, not for the ministry, but for me personally. And they kept doing that, and they were up to $25,000. Well, I was listening to one of Brother Hagen's old series one time and heard where they got this from. I heard the tape series. I went, oh, this is what Brother Hagen was saying. You know, they said, and their dad used to say, you know, well, I listened to what dad said. And he said, uh, I'm believing God. He said, I started out believing God for a one-time gift of $100. You know, and he says, uh, you know, uh, we just got, and at that time, they had just gotten a check to the ministry for half a million dollars. He said, now I'm doubling up. I'm believing God for a one-time gift for one million dollars. Now, here's what he said. He didn't go for me personally. He went, you may ask, what are we going to do with that money? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go on more radio stations. We're going to print more books. We're going to go on more television stations. We're going to reach more people for Jesus. Glory to God. That's what we're going to do with that money. See? Somebody took a principle and just started applying it to personal instead of doing his heart. 
was not so he could have all this personal wealth and prosperity. His heart was to reach more people. To get the message out to more people. And the print, you find Brother Hagin books all over the world. <clears throat> One place, the guy didn't, he, he'd been over there and wasn't um, getting permission from Faith Library, but he translated all the books <laughs> into um, that language. Put Brother Hagin's name on there, they had them all translated in that language. And now uh, that they've made a real solid connection with him in that region, uh, he's bringing all that and giving it to Raymond to, to publish and all this kind of stuff. But his books have made it in all kinds of languages all over the world. Why? To get the message to people to bring freedom, to bring liberty, to set at liberty them that are oppressed. The recovery of sight to the blind. Amen? It's the, it's the heart of the matter. Next week, we'll talk about the powers of the world to come a little bit more. Because if our heart is not right concerning these things, you can forget the power. You're going to be trying to pull 400 amps off a 20-amp circuit. And let me tell you what's going to happen. It's going to melt the wire. It can't handle it. If it doesn't kick the breaker, it's going to melt the wire. Guarantee it. Because you're pulling too much resistance through that wire. It's pulling more than it can handle. You know, you think about electricity, if you go pulling more than it, it can handle, it will, it will overheat in a heartbeat. Y'all hear you go home. That's why your house has circuits that are rate, rated 50 amp, 20 amp, 30 amp, 60 amp, 50 amp. You go try to put your HVAC on a standard 20 amp circuit, you're going to do something. And you ain't going to like it. Two things can happen. One is you can basically melt the wire below your circuit, or you can burn up your, your, your uh, HVAC because it's not getting enough power. And it's trying to mess it up. You'll, you'll burn stuff up in there, having uh, underpowered with the wrong kind of circuit coming in there. You start messing with the things of God with the wrong amperage heart. And you'll have a meltdown. And you'll mess it up. So we're not going to do that. We want to reach people. Now, thank God for the other churches in this area that are doing stuff. But we got a call. God sent us here. Amen. Folks, God sent us here. We are not here by mistake. This was ordained of God for us to be here. Hello? When, when the previous church that had this bill, when the pastor went home to be with Jesus, he's no longer there to carry out that vision. He, he ordained this property, this building to be used for the kingdom. And then he asked us to come and to pick up and to take his purposes for doing something here. Our calling, our purpose, but he put us here to do it. Amen. And so here we are. I said, here we are. And we're going to do it with the right heart and the right attitude. Can you say amen? In Jesus' name. Next Sunday, we will get on to the uh, powers of the world to come. More. Glory to God. In Jesus' name. Did y'all get anything out of all this? Do not be condemned. Now, this was not, this was, this, it was corrective in the sense of check your heart, not you scoundrel. Low life. All you can think about is you. No, I can be honest with you. If I blame anybody for that, the preachers. Because they, they preached it in a way for many people that created that thought process. So we're going to blame the preachers. Hello. We can't blame, you know, with the people being taught something and they're just getting, you know, pumped, you know, that God wants you wet, rich, God wants you rich, God wants you. Now giving this offering, you're going to be rich. And the people following that, I can't blame, I'm not blaming you, but if we can take what we've learned and say, you know, this is, this is Bible, this is, this is biblical, this is, and then take and get this right, then this becomes powerful. Amen. It's like a missing ingredient. You ever made of something and you were making it and you left something out of the recipe and it didn't taste right? Well, eh, 
Something's missing. Now, let me tell you, if you leave the salt out, you'll know it. Hello? Guarantee it. You leave the salt out and you will know it in a heartbeat. But I mean, you know, you can make chicken and pastry. Leave the chicken out. <laughs> now, the way Janie makes it, she uses a chicken base in the water. So it's going to have a flavor with the pastry or the dumplings, whatever you want to call them. I'm from down east. We are home of the first original colony in America, so we're right. <laughs> from down east. Okay. We call it chicken and pastry. Right? And if you go buy Ann's dumplings in the grocery store, look down there, it says thin pastry strips right underneath it. She just does uh, dumplings for all the mother folks who don't know any better. Marketing campaign, you know. And they don't know. If I call it pastry, they won't buy it. So I'll, just say, I'll call them dumplings for the people who don't know any better. All right. You make chicken and pastry. Going, now you put the salt, you put the pepper, you put the pastry in there, you put it in that water that you got the, the chicken stock. We use that Sam's uh, stuff that is a, a chicken base, you know, a couple of big tea, couple of big, and put it in the water and it gets it really greasy chickeny. <laughs> You're kind of going, well, yeah, this is all right, but there's something missing. Yeah, the chicken. All right? See, so we can have the power. Remember the, remember the priest had the pomegranate and the bell on his robe? Why? Because if he had all bells, it would be a clanging, ting clanging noise. The pomegranate in between the different little symbols on the bottom tempered it so that the sound was clear and distinct and pleasant instead of bing, bang, bang, bing, bang, bang, just banging all against each other. Okay? That's why, that's why they had the pomegranates in between each one. It was a tempering thing. Motive is the temperance to power. It makes it pleasant. It makes it entreatable. It makes it receivable. It makes it effective. Amen? So this isn't to rebuke you to make you feel bad. This is to say, check your heart. Because we have, we are headed in a direction as a church that, baby, let me just, oh, baby, I sound like I'm a groovy dick. The mamas and the papas. Sunday, I know it's Monday, but Sunday, Sunday, we're just going to, we'll make it, get it saved. All right. How do you recover from that, Lord? <laughs> Help me, Lord. Now, I can't back up that far. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when we, 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 when we come in here, so I know, don't want you to feel bad. Don't want you to feel condemned. I want you to check your heart. Because the direction that we're headed in, it's going to take people who are zealous on fire, burning with fervor for God, and they are wanting to reach people and get to people and do for people what Jesus did for them. Glory. Hallelujah. Because there's a big, there's a big wave coming. There's a big wave of revival coming. There's a power, there's, a, there's an outpouring of the glory. And I want to be right under the spout where the glory comes out. Hallelujah. I don't want to be over here at the, it's only for me spout. I want to get knocked over by his power and his glory. Amen. Amen. And washed up in this, in this revival and in this power outpouring of God. Janie and I were down at uh, Emerald Isle a number of years ago. Uh, Jesse, Jesse and Shannon were a little bit. I don't even know Nathan was born. Little bitty things. If you know anything about that part, that's a real steep shelf. I mean, it goes off pretty quick. Myrtle goes out real slow. This goes off real quick. Down there at Emerald Isle. It's right where the, uh, right there near the point where the, uh, the inlet comes in to the intercoastal waterway back behind between Moorhead City and Atlantic Beach. It goes back down the other end out to Fort Macon. And that's where that, that goes in through there. Very, very strong currents and all that stuff down in there. And uh, so we were, we were just standing up on the shore. This is the ocean behind us. We're watching the kids play on the beach, you know, and they're just they're playing. We're just, you know, mom and daddy, our little kids are up there playing. We're just standing at the edge of the water about, about this deep on me. Now, that's about that high on Janie, but about this deep on me. She's down in here to defend herself. Don't you tell her. Hallelujah. 
And we're just standing there talking. And next thing we know, boom, a wave comes over my head. I hadn't been holding her hand. I would, it would knock her down, and, and I would have had to catch her because, I mean, that's the only thing that kept her from getting swept back when that hit. I mean, it knocked the daylights out of us. There's a, there's, listen, there's, there's a wave coming. I said, there's a wave of his glory coming. There's a wave of his power coming. There's a wave of revival coming. And I know, I've seen it in the spirit. Remember I said, you know, I was in check. I was, I was saying, it's coming. I see it. I see it. I see it. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And I say it in check. I don't know check. The student told me what I was saying. In the spirit, I've seen it's coming. We want to ride the wave. We want to ride the wave of the glory into the revival. We want to ride the wave and see people saved and people healed and people set free and people delivered. Now, it doesn't mean you can't have a house, you can't have a car, you know, da 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 It can't mean that you want, you, you're not allowed to want something. That's not what we're talking about. Just keep the heart right. And when God needs it, he's got it. When they went to rebuild the temple, the people had stuff. But they said, we need it. And they had to finally tell them, stop. Stop bringing it. Stop bringing it. Yeah, and that, we're not taking up any more offers this month. We can't put them in the bank. Wouldn't that be a good problem to have? Bank won't let us put any more money in this week. <laughs> okay. Go to another bank. <laughs> no. Just, that's what, there's so much heart, heart, heart. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us. And we thank you that we, will, that we are gaining the, the, the maturity, the heart, the perspectives that you want us to have so we can handle the holy, pure power of God, the, 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 the purposes of God, and, and, do a, and be effective in reaching humanity for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All righty. Be with us Wednesday. It's seven. No prayer. No pre-prayer service. Okay. And then um, next Sunday, and um, like I said, Wednesday night we will be a, a micro. I'm probably gonna let Jess say, I mean, "Give me, give me one point." I can't even do that. You're on the clock. You got five minutes. Tick tock. Tick tock. Tick tock. Go. She, she, I know she, she's, she's verbose. Maybe I'll let Cap share. He's not nearly as verbose as Jessica. You kind of like, you know, Janie giving the testimony instead of me. Super condensed. Mia, you get all the color, by, you know, the color play and all that in it. Hallelujah. All right. Stand up. We love you. Those who are joining us on the internet, thank you for being with us today. Come be with us in person here at Expedition Church of the Triad, 6302 Pleas uh, Walter Wright Road here in Pleasant Garden, North Carolina, 4.3 miles from Interstate 85 and the Elm Eugene exit, exit 124 here in Greensboro. Love to have you come and be with us until we meet again on the Internet or here in person. Remember these words, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We're on a... We're on a path of victory. We're living the life of victory, yes. and it's forged by faith. See you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad, 